ADHD is coming out so much right now. I don't even know how to talk during videos. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. How are you today? Today we are going to be going over the case of Tammy Kyler. That's probably not how you say her name, but Google Translate said that's the way you said it. And I couldn't find it anywhere else. And there's really no videos on it because there's not that much information. There was an episode on the ID channel about it and that's where I found this case in the first place. The main people involved in this case are Arnold and Tammy. Arnold and Tammy's two children, Jarrell and Lindsay, and then Tammy's cousin, Chastity. There is another person, but he don't really play a big role in it until later. In 1998, Chastity and Arnold had been in a relationship for nearly three years, and their relationship began shortly after Lindsay's birth in 1995. I am going to get a little bit into the background of it. Tammy and Arnold divorced in 1996 after she found out that Arnold was cheating on her with her cousin Chastity. Arnold had visitation with Jarrell and Lindsay, his two children, every other weekend and two nights a week. And on these scheduled weeknight visits, he would actually pick up his two children from the babysitters, go to Tammy's house, and then watch them until she got home from work. So Chastity was pissed off that Arnold had maintained a good relationship with his ex-wife Tammy throughout the divorce and still so far up to this point. And so much so that on the scheduled weeknight visits, she would follow him to Tammy's house to make sure that he wasn't getting too comfortable. She would park down the street and she referred to when she did this as missions. So Tammy and Arnold, they got divorced in 1996. Tammy had bought the house that we're talking about right now in 1997. And because of the tension between her and Chastity, Chastity was never really invited into the house. Chastity wanted to marry Arnold and move away with him, but he said that he could never marry her because of the tension that it would cause between the whole family. And he could never move away because he wanted to stay close to his children. Chastity started to grow resentful of Tammy, Jarrell, and Lindsay because she viewed them as obstacles to the life that she envisioned with herself and Arnold. She eventually grew to hate Tammy. So Chastity, she started thinking of ways to harm Tammy when Tammy launched an investigation by the elders of her church to see whether Arnold had actually cheated on her while they were married. In May 1998, Chastity made a phone call to Alexis Gross, I, I, I don't know how to pronounce names here, okay? To a guy named Alexis, who was the 18-year-old boyfriend of another one of her cousins, to tell him about a job opening. And during that conversation, she asked him if he knew a hitman. So Chastity and Alexis together, they came up with a plan to vandalize Tammy's house, and Chastity would pay Alexis $4,000 if he would go into the house with her and restrain Tammy, well, she was the one to actually go around and mess it up. On July 7th, Chastity and Alexis went to a department store to buy navy blue coveralls, nylon stockings, and just other stuff that they needed for the vandalism. On July 8th, Chastity called Alexis again and said that they could go forward with their plan that night. Chastity spent the night at Arnold's apartment before leaving around 12.30 in the morning. While on the ride back to meet Alexis, Chastity called him and reassured him that the children were not going to be there, no one was going to get hurt, because the children were actually at their grandmother's house that night. Video surveillance footage at 2 a.m. shows Chastity and Alexis at a gas station, and they were purchasing a two-liter bottle filled with gasoline. Upon leaving, they went to an apartment complex that was within walking distance to Tammy's house. There, they changed into the navy blue coveralls, they made masks out of nylon stockings, they put latex gloves on that Chastity had already had in her car, and then they made the way to Tammy's house. Chastity was carrying the soda bottle filled with gasoline, and using a duplicate key that Chastity actually had made at some point, she easily opened the door to Tammy's house, and yeah, the, we're gonna get there, because I forgot to turn the page. At the time, Lindsay and Jarrell were actually sleeping in Tammy's room, and Tammy was awakened by a noise from the front of the house, so she went to investigate. There, she saw two people that she didn't recognize. Obviously, they were 
Alexis and Chastity. When she turned to run, Alexis went after her, restrained her face down in the foyer. Alexis quickly assured her that no one would get hurt. Chastity headed straight to Jarell and Lindsay's room, but of course they weren't there. So then she went to Tammy's room and she shut the door. A little bit later, she, Tammy actually heard Jarell ask, what are you doing? And upon hearing this, Tammy, she understandably, because it's her child, she went absolutely the fuck off. And Alexis actually, he removed his hand long enough to hear Tammy plead not to hurt her children. And during this fight, I just want to mention, because it's important for later, that Tammy managed to remove one of Alexis's gloves and his wristwatch. But yeah, back to the whole storyline. Alexis realized that the children were in fact home and that Tammy was doing something to them. He immediately let go of Tammy, yelled to Chastity that he was getting out of the house and got the fuck out of there. Chastity followed a few moments later and she actually left the two liter bottle filled with gasoline. Tammy went immediately to her bedroom and saw her two year old daughter, Lindsay, with wounds from a box cutter above her wrist. She goes downstairs, gets a towel, comes back. She gets Lindsay taken care of the best that she can. She calls to Jarrell and Jarrell doesn't respond. Jarrell is seven at this point. I never said their ages in the beginning, but Jarrell was seven at the time and Lindsay was two. She realizes that his head was almost decap like he had almost been decapitated. Jarrell was transported to Hartford Hospital in Connecticut, where he was pronounced dead at 2.58 a.m. The police interviewed Chastity actually on the day of the murder, and she said that she had spent the night at Arnold's apartment and had driven back home around 1 a.m. with no stops. She didn't stop on the way home, nothing. In her statement, she said that her relationship with Arnold wasn't that serious and that there wasn't much animosity between her and Tammy. Clearly there fucking was. When news reports of the murder came out on TV, they uh, featured a picture of the, what was it? The latex glove and the wristwatch. Alexis got worried that his DNA might possibly be found on one of these two items and that it might link him to, to the crime. Chastity asked him to return the $4,000 so that her bank account would not arouse suspicion. She also told Alexis that if the police asked him about the watch, he would tell them that on the night of the murder, he had stopped to help a man whose car had run out of gas. And after getting the gas for the man, Alexis sold the man the watch. Alexis went to the police and told them the story. And after hearing this story, police began to suspect that maybe Chastity wasn't telling them the truth. Chastity was interviewed by police again, where she repeatedly changed her story. So finally, they brought out a picture of Jarrell that was done during his autopsy. And one of the detectives, he said that he didn't really believe Chastity, what she was saying. She, he straight up asked her who killed Jarrell. And she replied, I did. Where she wrote down crying. She said, I did it. End of story. Alexis entered into a plea agreement and under the terms of this agreement, the state agreed to recommend a total effective sentence of no more than 25 years and he actually ended up testifying against Chastity. Chastity testified in her own defense. She insisted that she had not entered the house but Alexis did. So I think her whole plan this whole time was to pin the whole thing on Alexis. She also said that the purpose of the burglary was to only scare Tammy not to kill anyone. If the purpose of the burglary was not to kill anyone, then why the fuck did you go at two children with a box cutter and then slash his throat? You slashed a seven year old's kid throat, Chastity. She is still in prison to this day and she's probably not doing very well in there because they, they don't like baby killers. They don't like baby anything. That was the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please, if you have any case ideas, leave them in the comments below or DM me on any of my social media. If you want to watch more videos that aren't in as much graphic detail, um, I have a TikTok where I post like little snippets of things. I will see you guys in my next video.